right, we're back at North Town Machine, dirtying up Scott's shop. Thanks, Scott. <laughs> he's he's not too happy because I dragged this 1998 OM606 Mercedes inline six diesel into his shop. We're gonna tear it down. This is the 2JZ engine of the diesel world. Uh, three liters, weighs 460 pounds dry, and is capable of making about 500 horsepower, reasonably. And on top of that, it revs up to 5,200 RPM. So if you were interested in diesel engines on the channel before, stick around, because this is gonna be pretty epic. Here we go. One of the biggest things wrong with this engine is that it is freaking expensive. Oh yeah. <laughs> so we did buy the wrong engine. You guys are gonna say this is the NA model. It's got smaller pistons, smaller connecting rods, but we're gonna look into it and tear it down anyway because the cylinder head block, everything is exactly the same. So if we come across another engine that might need some parts, head gasket, then we can build one really good engine. But today we just wanna look at why these engines are so great and maybe even look into making some of our own parts. Maybe a good test engine to put a P-pump on there. Hmm, yeah, here we go. Oh, that's not bad. See? Now, as far as I know, this was in a field. But so far, everything's coming apart really nice. Thought we had to take the front balancer off to get this bracket off, but no, they leave a nice little divot in here so you can pull the bolt out. Already, nice to work on. You guys are probably gonna enjoy this video because I'm sure there's little tricks to taking this entire engine apart and I'll figure them out as we go. Definitely comment down below as to like, oh, you don't have to do that because you can do this. And like, oh, okay, that makes sense. I've never gotten into one of these before, mainly because we're in North America and this is a very European Mercedes engine. Uh, but this engine has a great reputation for being very stout and the Europeans are kind of laughing at us because this three liter puts out four or five hundred horsepower like our 5.9 liters do. Oh, look at the size of this. It's so small, but sweet. We call these videos everything wrong with, not, not that we're trying to find all the negative things and harp on how terrible of a decision certain things were in the building process. We make these videos everything wrong with, so if you were gonna buy one, you would know what to look for before you buy it, whether it's a good engine or a bad engine, or after you buy it, what to look for or maybe update or change to give you problem free. So it's got a vacuum actuated flapper inside, maybe for heat. I've seen that on the old gas job. I've never seen that on a diesel before. Day. Fuel pump. So this is on a wave here, wave ring, and it just hits this roller and then pumps it back and forth. That's pretty interesting. Generally in our climate, we're not too thrilled with plastic lines and rubber lines because that is always an opportunity for it to leak. When we're saying this, I'm giving my opinions while I'm taking the engine apart. We're not diagnosing this engine. We're not trying to figure out what's wrong with it or what happened to it because I don't know the history of it, but every engine has something wrong with it. So we're just letting you guys know. So we got most of the accessories pulled off. Um, the power steering pulley won't come off. It's supposed to slide off, which is pretty rusted, so I can't get these two bolts out, but that's fine. Uh, the only problem we had was these stupid plastic lines go to plastic fittings and they become brittle. And um, this is supposed to pop out with a little clip like this and pulling it out, it just snapped them and the little clips that secure these in, they're rusted, so when they open up, they just split. So if we put it back together again, we're gonna have to get some of those, but um, we'll pull our front dampener off and our torque converter and our flywheel, and then we basically have 
all the goodness left in one nice little batch here. So these are cast iron block with aluminum cylinder head and aluminum oil pan, which is kind of, so they weigh a pile less than the Cummins do, but you get six cylinders, a little less displacement and twice as much horsepower. Quieter and less vibration. Windage tray, nice deep sump, uh, temperature, I would imagine, or level, and a chain driven oil pump. Mercedes has been making diesels for a long time. I got a five cylinder and an old W124, um, and I think that's an OM602. They had an OM603, which was after that, which was an inline six, which had a mechanical injection pump, it was good for about 300 horse uh, with jacking up the injection pump. This one, um, unfortunately, has an electronic injection pump. So this is the electronic pump. Um, you can see just, it'll have a, a harness coming to it, um, and there's no levers on the side. So um, if you are looking for an OM606, look for the ones that have big levers on the side, kind of look more like a P-pump itself. That is the tunable pump. This is very restricted because of the electronics. That along with a whole set, uh, HX35, something like that, are good for about 450, 500 horse. So speaking of a P-pump, um, we thought, you know what? It's already been proven that you can take an OM603 mechanical pump and make 680 horsepower. That was on the dyno on Diesel Pump UK and almost a thousand foot pounds of torque. Now, that is not, I, I don't know if they touch the injectors, it's definitely turbo and pump and timing obviously, but um, that's insane to get that out of a three liter that weighs 460 pounds. That's nuts. Like, <laughs> I don't know if anybody's done it before. I think there's one tractor. Somebody swapped one of these into a tractor and put a P-pump in it. Now the P-pump stock, I don't know what the, the plungers are. I think they're like 11 millimeter stock. So it's already tuned up would be yeah. for this. Same firing order. Um, but it would make it undrivable. Like, there's, there's so much fuel going to that, it'd be rolling coal all the time, right from the get-go, but it would make a really good drag car. So the wheel's turning, maybe we'll see if we can figure out. Unfortunately, the, the housing for the injection pump is cast into the block and not into the timing cover. Um, so that presents an issue where otherwise we could just get a different timing cover made um, with the proper adapters to make it fit. So we'll definitely look into this. The nice thing about them is that they are a twin overhead cam. So to my understanding, when you have less weight and inertia of a camshaft in the block, uh, meaning your push, the weight of your push rods, the, the weight of the rocker, um, when you're revving that up, you're, you're pushing something and it wants to keep going and yep. then you get valve float, right? So yep. you're limited to your RPM. For, this, for a stock engine, because to, to get the horsepower out of a good engine, because I'm scared that people are going <laughs> to chew me apart. It's okay, Scott. You can build the push rod <laughs> engine, but to get to the RPMs of the overhead cam can, now you're at big parts, big money, completely different world. A lot bigger springs to return bigger, the valves. Bigger springs. But that is more, as that, that robs horsepower because it's more work yeah. to open the valves again, yeah. right? A lot of this technology is old. Right. It just wasn't as uh, common back then. Generally in pickups, there, there, are there any overhead valves? Um, well, you know, you got into the eco diesel. Pretty well, almost everything is overhead, overhead cam, cam now. now. Okay. But in the big trucks, you get into your like uh, 3406, like your C15s, that's overhead cam, uh, ISX, ISM. Only Scott would have a nine millimeter 12 point socket in the North America that actually. <laughs> <laughs> They don't even come in the socket sets. <laughs> Staff on. <laughs> Stanley was good for the. They're not super tight, so. Yeah. Remember, it's not the tools that make the mechanic, it's the mechanic that makes the tools. Right. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what leaves the shop, as long as the perception um, is that we look good, right? Yeah.
I've had something snap like as he's leaving the driveway. I can't even get the guy to come out here. No, it's because you're cheap. Don't breathe. Don't breathe that in, it's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> if you have uncontrollable poops, you know why. <laughs> you can see this pin goes through. See, that's why the Mercedes mechanics make so much more money. I know. Because they spend a lot of time going, hmm, <laughs> <laughs> what'd they do here? That's the only thing keeping this valve plate on is this pin that goes right through the head and holds the guide for the timing chain. But the steel is probably oxidized in the aluminum. It's going to be a little bit of a pain to get out. And then the, it's plastic, so that plastic's pretty brittle now. Shit, how's that come off? <laughs> no, because this just spins on the pin and the pin is splined in. Those are nip -hex. I figured German tools would work better on it. Okay, well I got this off, but so what? What's the point of that? So these are yep. the cam, are you, cam followers? Valve lift? Yeah, valve lifters. Yeah. Lifters? Yeah. Overhead. But they're not lifters, they push down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> different type of lifter. Pusher. Hydraulic, so there's no uh, valve setting on it. And then, uh, yeah. Never seen anything like that. Very, very cool. It's coming. That's hot. Oh. Oh. Right. It was coming. It right. was coming. It was right there. Oh. Hey, where's your safety glasses? <laughs> On your head. <laughs> That's just my hair pick. <laughs> What's that? Uh, a little square. Um, I think it's like off an old style clamp. Hmm. I don't see anything else floating around though. That's weird. It's probably a friend playing a joke on him. That. It looks like it's from the outside though. The the Torx is probably something, but I didn't snap anything. Interesting. You guys got to help me out here. This is the drive gear for the pump, and it's got. It looks like it's got like a, a variable timing on it. So it would retard the timing as it loads up, pushes up against the spring. That That's my only theory, yeah. but if I'm wrong, let me know. What'd this come out of? A, a field. <laughs> <laughs> too much. How do you get that pin out? Oh, that might be in that one. They might have used their brains on that one. Doesn't look like it. <laughs> Let's just take the timing cover off. Holy cow. It's a long chain. Yeah, I still gotta go around the crankshaft. Oh man, this... It looks this... like we gotta take the pan off. <laughs> we can take the pan off very easy. Oh, let take the head off. And take the whole engine apart. Look at those injectors, isn't that neat? Stop leak attitude or something? Uh, it's pretty gross, the cooling system is gross. Yeah. yeah. And then what's this build up? It's got some water in it. Yep. What's that field oh. water? It doesn't look bad. Composite gasket. There's a rear main seal, not a drop of oil. Nice and dry. No ribs. Crazy. Still soft. <laughs> look at that. Brand new. Oh, it's a crush. This engine's still in really good shape. Oh, 
I think these are pretty well junk because these are physically a lot smaller than the turboed version. Same with the connecting rods. Now, if you guys, if you guys are in the Niagara area or somewhere close and you've got a set of pistons and rods, we're happy to buy those off you. If not, we're not paying the absorbent amount for Mercedes. Uh, Scott knows a guy who is starting to build connecting rods. They might be able to just build this some. So we'll knock these off, we'll clean the block, check the crank, and then that's about it. So um, everything wrong with the OM606, the valve or the timing chain setup, um, unless we're missing something, maybe there's a master link on the chain or something that, we're, that we missed. Um, and the stupid pins going through for the timing chain tensioners and those stupid plastic hoses, and that's it. Get past that, you got yourself a stout little engine. What you need to do is buy a good running one that's already turbo, just throw a turbo and a pump on it, and send it. Yeah, it looks mint. I think we should just put it back together again. We can? Yeah. Yeah. Impressive. Very impressive. That's just so much clearance in it that... <laughs> There is that. It turns nice and easy. <laughs> but chances are, I bet you the parts are all good. I bet you all the bearings still mic up nice, not? Yep. Uh, one thing about the Mercedes, when I take the Mercedes apart, the, the BMWs, they got good parts. Yep. Even like you can see this crank's been nitrated and heat treated and everything. Like, they got good parts. Every nut and bolt came out. Other than that, that one pin, I crack it loose and it came loose. Yep. So 25 years old. There's no reason to think that this has been rebuilt, but um, still good quality steel. Like you can see the yellow tinge to the casting. Okay. And that's usually, and even just with the heat treated here, but it looks like it's nitrated. You can see the yellow kind of like in the actual casting. And then the holes are already all tapered. Yeah, chamfered, yep. Chamfered, yep. too. They have a Mercedes stamp on them, but they, I was saying, I was looking, trying to find part, like where, where stuff's made. And nothing's labeled as to like, made in Canada, made in Brazil, made in Mexico. Do they make the crankshaft in-house? One bearing lost its crush. All right, so the block works, this block works like in, it's in good shape. We still have, we didn't measure it, but we'll wash it. Uh, it still has crosshatch on it, so I don't think it needs too much work. Nope. Scott, thanks for letting us mess you up your shop again. And, yeah, it's uh, a lot cleaner. It was contained to just this spot this time. Yeah. It's a lot nicer. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> I still feel bad because the shop's really nice and clean. I always leave a mess. <laughs> if you guys know some really good Mercedes resources besides Mercedes dealerships, if we missed something, uh, definitely comment down below and let us know what else you want to see us review and kind of talk over. Get out there, work on it. If you're not filthy, you're not rich. <laughs> as long as physically we can get the peep pump on the side of the block, we wouldn't have to change anything on the block. And we could probably disassemble this pump, take this camshaft out, um, and then take the camshaft out of a peep pump and just get somebody to remake the camshaft, scan it. And For the mechanical though, is it the same shaft? Because this is electronic, right? Yeah, oh yeah it is, I'm it sure. Is it's shaft, still yeah. the same, It's you still have a, a camshaft spinning, lifting up on your plungers. Um, it's just controlled, the fueling is controlled by a rack that's electronically controlled. Well, maybe not sell this one online. No, maybe not. I mean, it's not out. for sale anymore. Scott yeah. bought it. Scott's yeah. into this project now. Machine is it? <laughs> Machine that right off of it, attach it to the P-pump. Yeah. yeah. I'm uh, I'm into that. Yeah? Yep. <laughs> All right, this is aluminum. I think the P pump is cast steel, so that's going to be an issue. Take cutting this flange off. JBL. Vince, Vince, JB weld Vince, Vince, awesome. Vince said he can weld anything. Yeah. So I got him welding steel to cast and cast to whatever. I wonder if he can weld aluminum to cast. <laughs>